Well, here's the ink, the, where did it go, carbon ink, and these are the pens that I had filled up with that ink, and I've been gone for two weeks, and let's see how they work. Now, I must say that I cheated, and I tried them up before I turned on the camera because I couldn't remember which pens had the ink in them or not. And what's the point, Pierre? Uh, they all sort of needed a little bit of coaxing is the point. That's the point I'm trying to make. I did have to prime them a little bit because it's been two weeks, almost three, since I've used them. And even a pen that has regular ink might need a little bit of coaxing. But one of them actually, you know, the, the lever didn't depress, it was clogged up. So you there is going to be a little bit of trauma that you're going to have to be dealing with, probably. And as you can see, if you just watch the beginning of this little bug that I did have to didn't start right away. I think they do, it's thicker ink than what I normally deal with, so you do end up getting some skipping happening. But if you are a deliberate artist and write or draw slower than I do, I don't think you'd have a problem with them. But I would probably put them in pens that are not super rare or super valuable or have a super fine point or whatever. I think you I think you sort of have to be a little broader. You have to use pens that maybe are not quite as delicate in terms of the nib style. Now, the last thing I want to do is draw bugs. I want to start drawing other things in my life or in my head. Now, just to be clear, these bugs are not in my head. They're in my imagination. The bugs that are in my head are completely different kind of bugs. Anyway, I'm about to, I meant to get a different pen. Why can't I just think? Just a little tiny bit. You think I could do that? When I'm done with these little doodlements, I'll add ink wash and we'll see how these bleed. So this is another one that I filled up. And this one, I may have actually dipped in water, so this might be slightly watered down. I think that for those of you that do the ink wash on top of the watercolor wash on top of ink drawings, though, most of you, I think, tend to be more careful about drawing than I am. I think you I think you're not as sketchy, loosey goosey. See that little skipping business that's happening right there? I'm not quite sure why that's happening. If it were regular ink, but the fact that it's happening right there might be I might have stuck my big old greasy thumbprint on that part of the paper because as you know or as if you don't know you know now that the oils of your hand create a little bit of a resistance resist to the ink that you put down okay let's do another one when I was about to dip this into water again see you're skipping I don't like that is there
there ink in the pen? Yes, there's ink in the pen. So why is it doing that? The channel might be clogged. Again, it's, you know, this, this ink, I guess if I were to use this ink a lot, I would probably have one pen, one pen only, maybe two, dedicated to the use of this ink. And then when I was done with my drawing, I would probably empty it out as best I can of the ink, put it back in its bottle, and then I would, when I wanted to do another drawing with that ink, I would then fill it up. Because there is ink in this, in this pen. See? I'll prove it to you. See? There's a big old blob right there. So the, the channel, the feed channel, is clogged. Now, it's not just the feed channel, but it might also be the back of the nib, the tine, you know, in between the nibs, it's probably clogged. And, you know, to, to take the pen apart and to clean all those elements off and then to put it back together again, each time you do that, you're risking some sort of damage. And I don't want you to do that because Every once in a while, you might end up breaking the pen, and I don't like that to happen. I don't like to do it on my pens of my own, and I don't want it to happen to your pens, dear viewer, because I care about you. Well, actually, I don't care about you. I care about your pens. No, that's not nice, Peer. Of course I care about them. Of course I care about each one of you. But this ink... In these pens. I'll take this pen apart when I'm done with this bug. The antennas of this bug look like TV antennas that you used to have on the, your house. Chris, you of the Wi-Fi generation, the cable TV generation, don't have those things. So you don't know what I'm talking about. Well, you might know what I'm talking about. Okay, before, we'll let this dry, because I'm going to put ink wash on top of this and just see how these things bleed. But while, let's just, no, for God's sake, let's just take this pen apart. Find out why it's doing this. I don't like... And don't do this at home with your pens, please. Look at that nastiness going on in there. See that? It's just crud. And that's that's why it's not flowing, is because it's it's just turning into slurry and grit and nastiness. So you get out your little toothpick and you clear out the channel there, maybe. And you'd take this and you'd wipe up all the crud on the back of this. Why does this nib have a hole in the back? A sign of a plated nib often is this little hole in the back. But this nib is not plated, so I don't know why that little hole is in the back. So that's relatively clean. Is this? Oh, 14 carats says it right there. So now let's put this back together.
Why does it look like I just broke this? I didn't. It's just the light was hitting the end of the iridium and it looked like I had broken it. But I didn't blanch. Okay, let's see. Okay, there's still ink in there. Now, perhaps, if you were to not, look at what just happened. See? That happened because of my gesticulation. Look, you can't take me anywhere. Where did that come from? Whatever. Well, it doesn't seem to be skipping as much. So again, you know, when the when you go away for two weeks, or for maybe even a day, who knows? No, not a day, but when you go away for a while, the ink that was in the channel is going to dry up and turn to that crud and clog the pen. So when you're done using this ink in these pens, empty them out and try to, if you can, without taking the pen apart, ascertain somehow through x-ray vision or something that all of the ink is out of the channel. Um, and then that way you can at least go away on vacation without worrying about your pens clogging up while you're away. But, you know, it's, it is a problem. I think you will, you'll find this ink Un, un, it will make you unhappy if every time you use it you have to unclog your pen. Okay, let's see if these are still... If the pen is still... the ink is still waterproof. So here's my dirty water. So this... the ink is already gray. The ink... the it's sort of a bluish gray color. Now let's see what happens here. Any bleeding? The bleeding seems un... Which is the one I just did? I just drew this one. See, this one is bleeding because it didn't let it dry enough. So you have to let it dry more than I did. So, that part of the ink works. It is, in fact, bleed-proof. But, see here, I didn't let this dry enough. And this poor bug. So what's the takeaway? What do you take away from this? You have enough wherewithal to deal with the bleeding ink, or the clogging ink, or not. It is a nice, you know, it, it, maybe if you used it as a, with your dip pens, that's, maybe that's what you do. You just use a dip pen with this, not a fountain pen. But I, I think there is a way to do it, and I'll keep experimenting for you people, gentle people out there. I'll still keep working to try to make it work for you. So that you can use them, use the sink safely without trauma to your pens. Whether you have trauma yourself, that's not a concern of mine. I want you to, I want the pens to be happy. So here's that pen I just filled up. I mean, that I just cleaned. So again, it takes a little bit of time to get the thing going. And I think if I were to draw at this speed, let's say I was, you see, even there it's railroads. How slow do I have to draw to make this ink not skip?
Not supposed to be doing that. Well, I'll keep experimenting, you guys. I, I don't want to leave you hanging. You know, each pen is going to be a little bit different. Uh, this is a. This was sort of a Franken pen I put together, where this is, you know, all Schaefer and all correct, and everything is is meant to be together here. So maybe the the um, you know the fact that this pen is more correct than this one, maybe that could be the problem with this one. This one seems to be fine. But I bet, you see, it's still... When I go like this, it's fine. But when I go like that, maybe it'll skip a little bit. I draw fast. Anyway, let me know what you think. I really do care about you people. I, I know that I was making a joke about caring only about your pens, but I care about you too. But, you know, while while you're thinking on that, make sure that you, you make sure I'm in the will so that you send me the pens, though. Because, of course, you know, I'll miss you very much, but I know that you want the pens to be in a good home and will be cared for as well, so... Just remember that. Okay? See you later.